Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the adjusting journal entries that get made for prepaid expenses. All right, prepaid expenses are a type of deferral where the revenue or expense is deferred until after the exchange of cash. So in this case, it's an expense, but the cash is leaving prior to the expense being recognized. So just like other deferrals, there's typically going to be some sort of original journal entry that occurs during the period, and then you make an adjusting entry later based on updated information. In the case of a prepaid, the original journal entry is when you pay the cash, and that payment gets recorded as an asset because someone owes you something for that cash. So that journal entry tends to look like this. Prepaid expense debit, that is an asset, cash out. So cash out, but someone now owes you something in exchange for that money. The adjusting journal entry that then comes later is once the other party has fulfilled their end of the job. At that point, you take this asset away and you record actual expense for cost incurred. So that looks like this credit prepaid expense, because that's asset going down, debit whatever that expense is, because now you've incurred the cost, even though the cash came a lot earlier. Those prepaid expenses are linked. It might be in full if the obligation has been fully fulfilled. It might be in part if the obligation has only been partly fulfilled. But ultimately, at the end of the day, what has happened is this prepaid expense that you originally created gets eliminated by this prepaid expense that you then take away. And what you're left with is a true expense for cost incurred and an equal amount of cash outflow. All right, common ways that this occurs. Well, renting property, if you're the tenant, if you're the one paying, when you rent, you typically have to pay your rent on say the first of the month and that enables you to stay there for the rest of the month. So you have paid on the first for the privilege to receive rent services for the next, say, 30 days. Um, entering into service contracts, such as insurance contracts, legal contracts, those sort of things, that's all basically a prepaid expense. You pay for insurance on a date, and that insurance then covers you for the next three, six, 12 months, whatever the case may be. Purchasing supplies is a special type of prepaid. When you buy a supply, you, you spend money, you have the supplies, but you don't actually incur the cost of those supplies until you use them, until you print the copy paper, until you hit the stapler, so forth and so on. These are all examples of typical prepaid expenses. Now, I do have a note down here because this is very interesting. Note that adjusting adjustments can be made based on quantity used, such as in the case of supplies. Did you use one ream of paper, two reams of paper? Expense that. Or the passage of time, such as my example with the rent, right? Let's do an example of these. On February 1st, Flyer Corps pays $6,000 to retain legal services for six months, effective immediately. The company's books close on February 28th. So our original entry on February 1st, is that you paid $6,000, so that is credit cash, $6,000, asset down, to retain legal services for six months effective immediately. So somebody now owes you $6,000 worth of legal services. So we're gonna call this prepaid, and I'm gonna just call it prepaid legal, $6,000. So there was our journal entry on February 1. Now, when we get to February 28th, we're saying the books close. In other words, we're gonna prepare some financial statements. The period is over. Adjusting journal entries are made after you've put together your trial balance and you say, hey, does anything need to be corrected to better portray the balance sheet and to make sure revenues and expenses wind up in the period where they should wind up? In this case, at the end of February, when you look at your balance sheet, your balance sheet is going to say, hey, we have an asset called prepaid legal $6,000 for six months of services. So arguably $1,000 per month, right? We do that math up top real quick. 6,000 divided by six months means that you're on average paying $1,000 per month for these services. 
But here's the deal. You bought those services on February 1st. It's now February 28th. One month has gone by. You don't have 6,000 of prepaid legal services anymore. You have 5,000 of prepaid legal services. How are we going to reflect that? Well, we're going to make an adjusting entry on the last day of the month, and we are going to credit prepaid legal for $1,000 for the portion of those services that have been used up. If we think about this from a T account perspective, prepaid legal, we put $6,000 in that asset, we now use 1,000 of that asset, and we are gonna report a $5,000 balance on our balance sheet, which accurately reflects what asset we have left. Now, what about the other side of this transaction? Well, if you think about adjusting entries, one account is gonna be a balance sheet account, one account's gonna be an income statement account. We already have our balance sheet account, prepaid legal, so now we're looking for revenue or expense. In this case, we paid someone else to receive services. So we are incurring the cost of one month of these services, or we are going to record legal expense as our debit on February 28th. Hypothetically, what if we had not done that adjusting entry? What problems does it cause? Well, this problem's actually pretty bad because had we not taken the thousand out of our prepaid, we would have on our balance sheet still reported $6,000 we would have told investors we had more company value than what we actually had. That's not good. Investors don't like you to overstate your value. Also, if you think about the income statement, well, I was putting NI for net income. If we think about the income statement, income statement is rev minus expense equals net income. Had we not recorded this entry, we would not have recorded this expense, which means our expenses would have been lower which means our net income would have been higher. So not only would we have overstated our assets, the company value, we would have overstated our profit as a result of not recording this entry. Another thing that investors do not like. So adjusting entries are super important, especially when they're on the expense side because you don't wanna overstate your assets. You don't wanna overstate your income. All right, that's it for prepaid expenses. Hope you found this helpful. Hope you join me for another video.